Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Uh, Digital Lifestyle here. Some news from the block. Digital, digital assets belong in traditional banking, ex-US regulator says. Right, let me read a little bit from it. Former US top reg, uh, US banking regulator sees more room for digital currency projects in traditional banks. Regulators might view increased exposure to digital assets warily, said an executive with Chainbridge Partners, a regulatory advisory firm. The executive spoke at the Banking Policy Institute annual conference in New York on Tuesday, a few days back. Right? So let me read on. More crypto business and innovation should be moved into this into traditional banking industry, at least according to some bankers and former bank regulators. And this form, uh, this comes as um, from what I was saying yeah, um, the other day regarding uh, um, the Financial Times um, article where um, UK um, bankers lobby uh, for uh, um, uh, hedge funds and all that kind of stuff. Um, the federal government doesn't want basically uh, third parties um, creating their own cryptocurrencies. Jim Ludwig, a former top US banking regulator, regulator who now runs a regulatory con consultancy firm, said at the Banking Policy Annual Conference on Tuesday in New York. Instead of experiment experimenting with central bank digital currencies, regulators should allow banks to play more aggressively into the crypto market, Ludwig said. If we're going to allow crypto at all. The banking industry is right, is the right place to do so. It's because it is regulated. The comments came in the midst of the winter crypto of the markets and assets prices, slumping increased scrutiny of digital assets and the firm that deal with them by financial regulators. Thomas um, Mahoud, I think, president of the CEO of Investments and Bank of Kefi, I can't even say that word, and would Con contrasted with the financial performance of banks amid rising interest rates and other economic advers adversities this year, with the with that of the failures of multiple cryptocurrency startups, I think they should this should be an inside the banking industry more. And he said because the regulatory framework around of around banking, it's all right having um, all these regulations and banking and all that kind of stuff but banking as it as it is sometimes still fails the poorest in, in the communities if this if this regulation is going to allow a level playing field i'm all i'm all for it anyway um moving on a channel analysis um it says hey analysis there but it says chain analysis i will leave a link in the description for you guys to go check it out um they do um podcasts on um uh, uh, from crime, uh, restitution, asset re realization in crypto assets. Um, they have products, solutions, services, insights um, in the company. They also have encrypted email services, web through. They talk about these podcasts, these regu regulations that are coming out. It, may, uh, it, it could be a good resource for people to have a look at. You don't have to pay for anything, it's all free. You can watch the podcast, listen to what they have to say, or listen, sorry, listen to the podcast and listen to what they have to say. All information, especially now, is very good information. It doesn't matter where it comes from as long as you take it on board and listen to what they're saying. And we're moving on. Um, we see in now Russian government one, working on stable coin settlement platform be between friendly nation state, uh, said the state media. A Russian finance ministry has reported beginning working on governments of friendly nations to establish a cross border stable coin based payments platform. According to the Treasury from Russia's state-owned news agency, TASS Finance Minister Alexei, I can't say his name, said that the government was looking to create settlement platforms to avoid US uh, dollar and euros. The finance minister reported said that the Russian government would need to impose additional regulations to enact the platform between itself and friendly nations, possibly including China, Belarus and North Korea. We're offering a mutually acceptable tokenized instrument that we will be that will be used on these platforms, which are essentially clearing platforms that are currently developing the currencies, said um Russell Reeve, I think that's his name, I'm but may have butchered it. Stable coins can be pegged to some generally recognized instruments, for example, gold, the value of which is clear and appropriate for all parties involved. 
Russia has been the target of severe sanctions imposed by the United States and European Union following the country's invasion of the Ukraine war in February. The EU announced in March its plan to remove many Russian banks from the this, this Society of the World Internal Bank Financial Transaction SWIFT Messaging Service uh, System sorry, and the US Office of Foreign Asset Control added several Russian entities and nationals to its list of specially designed nationals. Anyway, moving on. Right, central banks continue to stockpile gold. Um, gold um, reserves are held by central banks increased by 37 tons in July. And these, <laughs> this is coming back to what Russia is doing, right? Let's move on. Gold and silver price manipulation are the greatest trick ever pulled, and this was back in uh, July, 20, uh, July 2019. There is probably no other topic in, in the gold and silver markets which incites heated debate more, more than the subject of precious, precious metal price manipulation. But that prices in the precious metal markets are manipulated is not a speculation, it is in fact a fact made clear again recently by the Commodities and Futures and Trading Commission CFTFC, ruling against its uh, investment, um, sorry, invest against investment bank Merrill Lynch Commodities MLCI, the, sp the spoofing pricing of gold and silver futures on the COMEX exchange. Um, JP Morgan has been guilty of that as well, by the way. Um, so of other com uh, com uh, uh, banking infrastructures. And let me play you this last, uh, play you a video here. Oh, it's not the last video, but it's the last, um, it's a video, by the way. And, and the gold standard. Right. The fact is, is that we're not going to, no, no one's just going to wave a, no one's just going to wave a, magic one and somehow get us back on the gold standard. It's not going to happen that way. It might be quite disruptive. It might be only mildly disruptive depending on how it's done. But you still have to go through a transition period. The transition period will have to reprice gold to a level which allows it to be valued vis-a-vis the global asset base and global trade volumes in a way that implies equilibrium. What I mean by that is that today the gold price is too low to to allow low, markets to, to allow clear markets because to assets clear. are overvalued vis-a-vis yes, -vis gold vis -vis and you gold. need to you rebalance, need rebalance the global economy the global such economy, that you don't such have that these don't imbalances, have these which are huge, right, as a result of right, all the dollar, as accumulation, dollar accumulation as reserves uh, through the decades of Bretton uh, Woods. Decades of Bretton so Bretton the gold Woods. price needs to so rise by an order of magnitude uh, in order to allow that uh, system to work. So you go through this phase transition when the price of gold has to rise by an order of magnitude. In my book, I go through some calculations what that order of magnitude would be. Indeed, they're based on calculations that have been made before by other economists, including under Bretton Woods. I mean, would you believe? We take it for granted today. We think, oh, gee, Bretton Woods is a stable system. It just worked. Nobody questioned it. That's not true. There was lots of debate and discussion during already the 1950s, but in particular the 1960s, that the U.S. money and credit supply was growing too quickly to be credibly backed by gold anymore and to allow Bretton Woods to function. And so there was already this dispute going on. That gold was going to have to be revalued at some point. And indeed, gold was revalued uh, before Bretton Woods broke down completely. They tried to go through a revaluation process, but it just wasn't enough. It didn't properly rebalance international trade, and, as, and it all blew up in the end when the U.S. basically lost patience uh, with the rest of the world. So, you know, that's how it happened then. But back then, the world was still very unipolar in political, economic, and military terms. It's far less so today. So I think uh, today, so today, the revaluation uh, that gold would have to go through to, to imply to a stable international a stable monetary equilibrium is huge. And, and huge. by implication, according to my calculations, my you're calculations, talking something in the region of about region 50 thousand dollars per ounce being a reasonable market clearing price for gold if you fully go back uh, to a gold-backed international monetary system. Right. The fact. So what I just played you there basically backs up what was happening within the, the gold market. They are um, 
moves for central banks etc to stockpile gold we've seen 37 tons of it already there um, so just I think people need to wake up to see what's happening with the gold market and the repricing of cryptocurrencies to gold I think that's going to happen but not financial advice but just wait and see um, here's some uh, Glint, Glint um, I actually get my crypto uh, my gold sorry from Glint they are um, FDIC insured um, they are with um, Lloyds Bank there will be a link in the description there is always a link in the description if you want to go check it out and the last one I have here is of Terra Terra Luna and uh, the explosion um, Terra Luna Classic has soared over 200% in the last two weeks Bitcoin prices have gone down in the same period there is an ongoing inverse relationship between LUNC and BTC which is similar to the gold and the stock market right LUNC has jumped back to headlines this week but bearing positive news this time. The algorithmic state um, altcoin has soared over 200% in the last seven days, reaching its highest value in the last three months. As the illustrious altcoin starts to slow a slow climb from zero, a new unique trend has been spotted. It seems that LUNC prices pumped over time, Bitcoin prices dip, and at its new trend, the inverse of relationship between LUNC and BTC goes back almost two years even when LUNC was at its peak. So it begins with the question, it begs the question, sorry, if LUNC is the gold or crypto industry, let's explore. Right, just six months ago, LUNC, one of the top biggest cryptocurrencies in the world in April this year reached its all time high of $119. It's actually nearly 420, in fact, it was 120. When the rest of the crypto market was suffering from a major bear, bear run. Between January to April this year, Bitcoin prices fluctuated between 40k and 37, uh, 35k at the, the point. However, during this time, Luna kept rising from 85 to 120. See, there you go. For, following the bull run, Luna lost its entire value due to the depegging of its stablecoin. A similar trend was visible during Luna's rise in 2021. The altcoin always, always gained significant traction between Bitcoin and prices have dipped. Since Terra initiated a new tax burn mechanism on Terra Classic earlier this week, LUNC has again started to pump. On the other hand, Bitcoin prices have started to dip. I think they're on their way up again, but so is LUNC. Bitcoin prices have dipped over 10% in the last two weeks, while LUNC have almost climbed 300% in the same period. Right, it's not financial advice, but I actually got some way back in June. I'm not saying that you should get some now. It's probably going to dip a little bit more, but it may well be worth getting some money into Luna. I'm not telling you to put a whole heap in there. I'm not telling you to put hundreds of thousands of pounds or even a hundred thousand there. A ten up more to do it. I got a hundred thousand coins for ten dollars. I'm not saying you're going to get that now, but you could probably get about fifty thousand for ten dollars. Is it worth a cheeky punt? Why not? Don't miss out an opportunity for it to go from where it is now to one dollar. It may not ever get to, to, to 120, it may get to two dollars, it may get to 10 cents. But just think about that, you just put in 10 dollars and you've made a significant amount of money in, uh, in maybe the next 12 months just by putting 10 dollars into you know, not financial advice. Please do your own research and don't allow yourself to be scammed in this market. Don't take um, uh, um, people's comments in here as, as uh, verbatim and what they're doing. A lot of people are scamming people in this market. I'm only here to try and put out the truth from what I see is happening and just give you a basic overview of the cryptocurrency market. It's up to you whether you want to get in or, in or not. That's your choice. Anyway, I'm out. Take care. Later.